Hey there, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily or at MQ's Art. Today we are going to be having a whole lot of fun because my very good friends over at Above Ground Art Supplies sent me a whole bunch of Turner acryl gouache sets. So I have talked about Above Ground before on my channel. They are a Canadian Toronto-based art store that I went to pretty much every day when I was in art school. So I'm so happy to be working with them. They are the only Canadian supplier of the Japanese Turner brand, which is super cool. So I will have a link to these on Above Ground's website down below. So they sent me the dream set the world set and the earth set so let's take a look they are all 12 color sets so here is the dream set there are some really fun vibrant colors in here wow so there's a fluorescent color here the rose that looks really cool let's check out the world set so here is the world set you can see they have slightly different packaging and we have different colors in here really excited about the lilac and let's check out the earth set expecting more natural colors in this one so that is the earth set they also sent me a couple more above ground brushes because I love their synthetic brushes for my gouache paintings. So this is the 12 color set they sent me before. So I'm going to compare the colors. There's a few repeats but mostly these are all new colors. So one of the first things I noticed about these three sets is that the white and black are the same in all sets. It's titanium white and Mars black which is really cool. I have never used Mars black is titanium white and jet black. I think Mars black might be the same as iron oxide black but I'll have to look into that. Let's swatch them and then we can get into doing some paintings. Okay let's get into some swatching. I decided just to swatch three colors from each set. Uh, just some colors that really stood out to me because I knew it would take a while to swatch them all and I really wanted to get into painting. Above Ground actually has a really great swatching video of all of the paints in these sets, so I will link that down below. From the Earth set, I swatched turquoise blue, fresh green, and manganese blue hue. I really love how bright the fresh green is. And from the Dream set, I swatched barrel green, rose, and night blue. That rose is so fluorescent, the camera brightness kind of shot up. I would love to know what your favorite color is from these swatches. I think my favorites are coming up. So from the world set, I swatched red ochre, lilac, and rose pink. I really loved the swatches for the set. also wanted to compare the Mars Black and the Jet Black. The Jet Black is from another Turner 12 color set that I have and maybe this isn't interesting to other people but I don't know I just love learning about different pigments so I hope this is interesting to you as well. So Mars Black is also called Iron Oxide Black. It is synthetic, it has a high tinting strength, it's more opaque than other blacks and it's more light fast. Jet black is also synthetic and it is also called aniline black. Jet black is more neutral and it's also not as opaque. It's a little bit more transparent so the tinting strength isn't as strong and it's also not as light fast so if that is something that is important to you then maybe Mars black is the way to go.
also to test out these new paints. I thought maybe some pet portraits would be a good idea, so I'm going to do two paintings, one of a cat and one of a dog. So here I'm starting off with a portrait of a basset hound. If you follow me on Instagram, I have been sketching these guys a lot recently. I think their features provide some really fun shapes to play with. Oh, and by the way, I sketched both of these with watercolor colored pencils that I found in my stash, but I thought that they were perfect for this application. I really liked that they kind of melted away as I painted on top of them, and I think I'll be using them a lot more in the future for under sketches for gouache paintings. So because there were so many fun colors in these sets, I wanted to do a funky color palette, but what you're going to see is I end up painting over this though because I felt like all of these bright flashy colors didn't really have a purpose, if that makes sense, like there was too much of a good thing. Later in the video, I paint over this and I use this first painting as sort of the underpainting. I let some of that beautiful rose show through and overall I'm much more happy with the final product then, so <laughs> you're gonna have to wait and see how that turns out. You can see I'm starting with the darks and then moving into the midtones and then finally going into the lights. I was having fun with this color palette, but it just didn't feel special enough to me. I just felt like, you know, I wouldn't want to stare at this painting for too long and that there was probably something I could do to make it better. I just needed to step back and change focus and come back to it. To give myself a little break, I switched gears and started this cat painting. I really enjoyed the process of sketching and painting these pet portraits, and I really want to do more of them. So here is the palette I used for the painting. You can pause if you're interested. I think I also used the permanent scarlet. I added that to the palette a little bit later. And I just wanted to use a nice warm wash to start the painting off to build up some atmosphere and eliminate that scary white background. For both of these paintings, I used a teeny bit of Turner Acryl Gouache Retarder, which I actually purchased from Above Ground a few months ago. It just extends the drying time of the gouaches, which I really enjoy. It allows me to work with them a little bit longer, and I find it almost gives me the same feeling as painting Alla Prima with oils, which if you've watched my channel for a while, that's my jam. I love Alla Prima painting.
So with both of these pet portraits, my main goals were to focus on shape and value and really decide what I want the focal point to be without getting carried away with fussy details. So for this cat painting, the focal point is the eyes and the face, so that is where the most detail is and the rest of the painting is sort of more suggestive. In the reference photo I used, the cat is sitting on a kitchen counter, so there's bottles and spice jars behind him, and they looked like they would be really fun to paint. But I said, Emily, don't get carried away, this is not the focal point, and in the end, you'll see I sort of go over the background with a light wash to push the background further back. So you'll see me do that in a little bit. I left the eyes till almost the very end. When I do eyes, I always do the pupils last. I do the whites of the eyes and the irises first. And this is because eyes are a round object, so the pupils are usually closer to us. So they should be on top because you do want to sort of work bottom to top, if that makes sense. And for this, I just mixed I believe the sepia, the cobalt blue, the permanent red, and some Mars black because I really wanted a nice chromatic black. I used a very similar mixture for the rest of the cat as well. So for this wash over the background, I just used a little more water than I normally would just to gently send that information backwards. <laughs> And the most fun part of the entire painting is adding these little glowy highlights. I wanted to add them to the background and then I thought, you know what, this is my painting. I'm going to add sprinkles to this painting because why not? So I start off with just adding these white dots. They've kind of got a glowy firefly look. And then I go in with the lilac and lastly with that fresh green. And I really liked the look of this. This is another way that the background gets pushed back because you have this flat color on top. And yeah, I just thought it made the piece a little bit more fun and exciting. It feels a little bit like a celebration of sorts. So hot tip if you struggle to take 
your tape off without ripping the paper. If you use a hair dryer, a blow dryer, on a warm setting, it melts the glue a little bit and it allows the tape to come right up. So with the gained confidence from the cat painting, I was ready to tackle the Basset Hound painting again. I wanted these bright neon colors to be like a special little gift rather than, you know, all up in your face. So I do cover them up. I'm so sorry if you like the look of the painting at this stage, but I let this bright pink shine through in certain areas and I think it just makes the painting a lot more interesting. I also make my darker values darker and I found as soon as I did this, the painting already started looking better. And then I wanted to add some peachy orangey colors because I knew these would pop against the purpley blues. So that's what I did next. And yeah, I was really happy with how this painting turned out after I made these changes. I'm not mad at all that the first attempt didn't really go as planned because I really liked using it as a underpainting as a guideline for shapes and values and it might be something I do on purpose in the future, you know, doing an underpainting with this fluorescent rose color and then allowing some of it to peek through I think is a really fun look. So I also mixed this sort of sage pale green and I think it worked really well with the piece and it sort of made the pink underneath a little bit more exciting because there were these muted colors. I don't know, as always, feel free to let me know what you think. Did I ruin the painting? Which painting ends up being your favorite, the Basset Hound or the cat? Yeah, let me know. These were really fun little paintings to do, and I honestly had such a blast working on them. So I've been trying a lot of different mediums this past year. Making YouTube videos has really allowed me to do that and explore, and I'm starting to realize what mediums I gravitate to and these acrylic gouaches are really for me and I know they are going to be part of my regular rotation so I'm sure you're going to be seeing a lot of them. <laughs> To make these pieces feel like they sort of go together, I added some sprinkles. But for this one, I decided to make the sprinkles sort of vertical little lines because it just seemed to suit the Basset Hound. You know what I mean? You can't look at a Basset Hound and forget gravity exists. So I thought, I thought it worked. Alright, that is it for this video. This was such a fun one, you guys. I really hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, feel free to leave it a like. If you want to see when I post next, feel free to subscribe. I want to say a big thank you to Above Ground for sponsoring this video and sending me these products. I will have all of the links to all of this stuff in the description. Also, a big thank you to my channel members. You guys are the best. I will see you all very, very soon with another video. Bye-bye.